Thank you for joining us for the Ministry of the Word at Redeemed Christian Fellowship in Phoenix, Arizona. We hope the Ministry of the Word will be a blessing to you. Hi, welcome to our Thursday midweek service. Thank you for joining us and being with us today. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, Pastor Walter asked me to start um, a series on his faith manual. We're, I don't think we're going to be going through the whole thing. I think he wanted me to go through uh, maybe the first eight chapters, eight lessons in this manual. So that is the faith manual. If you have it with you, we're going to be starting in chapter one, <clears throat> or it's called faith lesson one in the manual. Uh, what is faith? But first, we'll start with prayer. Thank you, Father God, for your word. We thank you, Lord, for the revelation that your word gives us. We thank you, Lord, that you teach us and you guide us and you instruct us in all truth and wisdom, knowledge and understanding. And we give you all the glory and all the honor for all that we have in our life and all that we're, you're doing in our life. We just recognize that it's you and that it's good. And we thank you and give you glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, <clears throat> so we are starting with faith. Lesson one, what is faith? And he was talking to me recently about why he wanted uh, us to go through this manual. Um, and that's just to get back to the ABCs of faith and to understand what faith is, why we need faith, the importance of faith, how to grow our faith. Um, and so uh, uh, this is a, it's gonna be fun. This is, I love getting back to the root of our faith and, and uh getting into these notes that Pastor Walter wrote. He wrote this one in 2007. So this is an oldie, but it's a, it's so full of revelation. It's so good. Um, God is so good. So in order to understand faith, we must answer the question, what is faith? Strong's definition of faith is persuasion or conviction. And Vines adds to this meaning by saying that faith is an assurance or guarantee. So it's a persuasion, a conviction, assurance or guarantee uh, that you have what you're believing for. <clears throat> Excuse me. Faith is often translated belief or believing, depending on how it is used. The words faith and believe in the New Testament are often used interchangeably. The reason for this is because they are the same Greek word. They're just being translated differently. So it's the same Greek word. It's just depending on how it is used is how it will be translated. So the Greek word pistis is translated faith, when it is being used as a noun, and it is translated as believe when it is being used as a verb. So believe is basically faith in action. To put it in a way that we can understand it, faith is an inward conviction or persuasion, an assurance, and it is always inward. So that persuasion, that conviction, that assurance that you know, that you know that you know, that you have what you are believing for it's going to be it's going to come from your inside your spirit from out of your heart uh, there's nothing that can convince you otherwise it's so uh, guaranteed in its assurance and its believing that you cannot be talked out of it um uh it, it's like someone trying to tell you that you are not saved when you know that you know that you know that you are saved and there's nothing that anyone can say or do to change your mind otherwise. So, um, faith is not emotion or feelings. It is not intellect. It is an inward persuasion that what God has said in his word or the Bible is true. It's not going to come out of your emotions. It's not going to come out of your feelings. It's not even going to come out of your mind. It's inside your spirit. It's a conviction and it's uh, 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 a strong, solid conviction that cannot be changed. This means that we must believe that God is the author of the Bible and that the Bible is God-breathed. And we're going to read 2 Timothy 3, 16 <clears throat> and 17. So every scripture is God-breathed. Wait, that's the... Um, Amplified. Why not? I'll just read it out of the Amplified. Every scripture is God-breathed, given by his inspiration, and profitable for instruction, for reproof, and conviction of sin, for correction of error, and discipline and obedience, and for training in righteousness, in holy living, in conformity to God's will, in thought, purpose, and action, so that the man of God may be complete and proficient, 
well fitted and thoroughly equi equipped for every good work. That means mature, that means able to do the word. Okay, so because of this, we believe, because of this belief, we must understand that faith gives God's word first place. You must believe that God is the author of the Bible and that the Bible is God breathed. You have to believe that every word that is in this Bible is, is, is from God. And you have to be convinced of it. You have to believe that what he says in his word is true above everything else, no matter the circumstance, no matter what it looks like, no matter what people tell you, no matter what the enemy tells you, because uh, you're going to have thoughts that contradict the word. You're going to have uh, experiences that come against the word because the enemy is trying to steal the word from you. He's trying to steal the truth from you. And he's trying to steal God's promise from you because he doesn't want you to have it. He doesn't want you to, to, to have faith. He doesn't want you to have what God promised you. So he's going to do everything he can. He's going to put thoughts in your head. He's going to uh, 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 try to contradict uh, God's word in your life through through uh, bad experiences in your life. And that doesn't come from God. We know it doesn't come from God because only good things come from God. And so when things in your life contradict the word of God, you have to be able to believe the word of God above. The word of God is above those things in your life. So it is important to understand that faith goes beyond the limits of our intellect and our emotions and uh, uh, this is something that <clears throat> that you have to uh, uh, really intentionally uh, 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 shut down in your life you have to intentionally uh, uh, think correctly and change the way you think to line up with the Word of God you have to intentionally uh, uh, put put aside emotion and feelings that contradict what God promised you, that contradict what God told you is true. Because there are uh, times where uh, y you may not feel like uh, God's word is working in your life, but that doesn't mean that it isn't. That doesn't mean that it's not working in your life because God is always, always willing, able, and ready and is always working on your behalf. <clears throat> We're going to read 2 Corinthians 5, 7. For we walk by faith, not by sight. The things that we that we, we see almost always trigger the intellect and or the emotions. The physical eyes are the gateway to our mind and our emotions. Whenever or Whatever we see will generally form some kind of opinion in our mind. This is your intellect, our mind can also trigger some sort of feeling that is connected to what we are seeing physically. Therefore, our intellect can't always support our faith. It is in these times that we must make a conscious decision to bypass our intellect and go with the assurance of our hearts. <clears throat> there are, there are, there, there are uh, so many times in, in our life specifically, in mine and Dave's life specifically, where circumstances did not line up with what we were believing for. And, circum and, uh, and, and, and specific things where it seemed like uh, one thing after another would go wrong. And we uh, have, have um, uh, purposed in our faith walk to always come together in agreement on the Word of God. And no matter what it looks like, always uh, look to the Word of God as our truth above every circumstance. Uh, we've told you the testimony of when Kenzie had to be airlifted to the hospital because she had a seizure um, and uh, and how how much that actually cost uh, we were uh, over a hundred thousand dollars now uh, was owed to the hospital the 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 um, airlift it was it was more than we uh, physically were able to pay within our own means because that, that's just not, we just didn't have $100,000 sitting around. Um, but God, because we kept our faith in God, because we did not waver, God paid that debt off within, I believe, two years. Two years, that $100,000 was paid off. Originally, um, it went, it went from like $100,000 to I think about fifty to $60,000 is what we negotiated to actually pay to them. And so from there, we uh, uh, 
we uh, paid that through a 401k loan and and um, we were that was coming out of our paycheck each week and um, one day we looked at it and we were we were realizing that it was done it was gone the, the loan was paid off and we don't know how but it was paid off and uh, that money that we owed was 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 it, we, we paid everyone we owed and the loan was paid back and we didn't do a thing about it it was just done on our behalf and um, that's how good God is that's how big God is he can take your resources and multiply them in your life because he is able it's uh, according to his riches and glory not according to what you have not according to your own means but according to his and his ability in your life and we'll get into that now we're going to talk about faith is of the heart we're going to look at romans 10 9 through 10 that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the lord jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. This verse clearly shows us that faith is what the heart believes, and what the heart is convinced of and persuaded of. It is an inward persuasion and conviction that we must look for help, look for to help us determine whether or not we're in faith. We can also determine how strong our faith really is, <clears throat> Excuse me. We can also determine how strong our faith really is by examining the persuasion, assurance, or convictions of our heart. You can, uh, uh, you can determine the level of faith that you are walking in by examining these things in your heart. By examining uh, how how much persuasion or how much assurance or conviction that you're walking in, you really tru truly can, can uh, determine your own self how much faith you have. You can determine whether or not you're able to believe. Now, uh, when uh, Dave and I first started out, we were able to believe God for a $2,000 car. We weren't able to believe God for a 10, 15, 20, 30,000 dollar car when we first got married, but we bought a 2,000 dollar car with our faith. And then when that, uh, that, that met our needs for a while, and when that no longer met our needs, we were able to then believe God for a $14,000 car. And when that no longer met our needs, we were able to believe God for more. And so we just, we, we knew the limitations of our faith and we didn't exceed uh, or, or go beyond what we were able to believe for. That didn't mean God wasn't able to do more for us. It was just what we were able to believe for. And so because we started out in an area where we were able to believe and we watched and we saw God move in our life continuously, each step of faith we took, God met us where we were at, and he moved in our life according to our faith. And as our faith grew, he continued to meet us where we were at. And now I am convinced that no matter the need that arises in our life, that God will take care of the needs in our life because of his word, because of what he promised us. Now that's our faith growing. That's, uh, that's how we were able to determine what level of faith we were walking in because we believed and, and operated according to the faith we had. Not according to someone else's faith, not according to, to what other people could believe for, but according to what we knew in our hearts, our limitations of what we were able to believe for. Um, so it is just a matter of a truthful and honest... Honest? <laughs> It is just a matter of a truthful and honest examination of the convictions of the heart. It's not shameful to recognize that you're not able to believe God at a certain level. It's not, it, 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 it's, it's a matter of being truthful so that you can achieve your faith goals. Mm -hmm. And as you watch God move and as you watch God prove himself to you, then your faith can continue to grow. And that's where you go from faith to faith, from victory to victory, from glory to glory, because you're being truthful with yourself and you're recognizing what you're able to believe God for. So we are not speaking of the physical heart. We are speaking of the spiritual cavity in which man's spirit is a part of. Believing with the heart or heart faith is believing with our inner man or our spirit. The hidden man of the heart. We're going to read 1 Peter 3, 4. But let it be the hidden man of the heart, and that which is not corruptible, even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit, which is 
in the sight of God of great price. There is a hidden man of the heart, which Peter describes as our spirit. And Romans chapter 2, verses 28 and 29 also refers to the heart as being the spirit of man. For it says, for he is not a Jew, which is one outwardly, neither is that circumcision, which is outward in the flesh, but he is a Jew, which is one inwardly, and circumcision is that of the heart in the spirit and not in the letter who prays, whose praise is not of men, but of God. Dave reads the scripture so much better than me. <laughs> um, so the heart spoken of in scripture is not a physical organ. It's not physically your heart that pumps blood throughout your body, but a spiritual cavity. Oftentimes when the heart is mentioned, it is referring to man's spirit. That cavity that houses your spirit. That is the heart that is referring to, that this is referring to. The spirit of man is also what we know as the inner man as revealed in 2 Corinthians 4.16 that says, For which cause we faint not, but though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 1, and then chapter 5, verses 6 through 8, tells us that our body serves as a house or a home for us. Um, and that says, For we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, we have a building of God and house not made with hands eternal in the heavens. Therefore, we are always confident knowing that whilst we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord, for we walk by faith, not by sight. We are confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body to, and to be present with the Lord. So 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 26 and 27 says that we are supposed to keep our body under. Notice that the, the language suggests we are not our body. So this is all just proof telling you what the different parts are. Of you are made up of and that's uh, 1 Corinthians 9 26 to 27 I therefore so run not as uncertainly certainly so fight I not as one that beateth the air but I keep under my body bring it and bring it into subjection lest that by any means when I have preached to others I myself should be a castaway we are not who we are because of our outward appearance in the flesh or body hey so we are who we are inwardly in the spirit or as spiritual beings. We need to learn to be more inner or spirit conscious. This will help us not to be so dependent on our senses. This is something that, this is something that I've personally been um, uh, focusing on in, in my own spiritual development, and that is recognizing what am I operating out of, what, in, in not just in the big areas of life, but in every action that I make. Was that motivated by faith, or was that motivated out of my flesh? Uh, you know, uh, that could be in, in my uh, interaction with others. Was I interacting with others out of my spirit or was I interacting with others out of my flesh? And, and so that is something that, um, that I've even been talking to pastor about in, 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 in this uh, specific time in my life because I truly want to be a spirit-led being. I don't want to be body-ruled. I don't want to be uh, uh, emotionally ruled. Or, or physically ruled or intellectually ruled. I want to be spirit ruled. And in order to do that, I have to make a conscious decision to, 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 to always walk in my spirit and not out of my flesh. Mm -hmm. So there's enough scriptural evidence to say that largely when the Bible speaks of the heart, it is speaking of our inner man or spirit man, unless context suggests otherwise. Now we're going to talk about believing from the heart. In Proverbs 3, Five through six, it says, "Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge Him, and He shall direct thy paths." So the word "trust" in verse five is the Old Testament equivalent to our New Testament word for faith. So you can say, "Believing, trusting in the Lord with all thine heart," or "Believe in the Lord and trust in the Lord with all thine heart." So notice when it comes to believing God, our understanding is not required. Lean not unto your own understanding. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not unto your own understanding. Again, not the physical heart that pumps your blood, but your heart that, your, that is your spirit. So in fact, we are warned not to lean to our own understanding. Trying to walk in faith through head knowledge doesn't work. It's not gonna work. Trying to lean on your own understanding will not uh, help you walk in faith. It will, it will, it could hinder your faith walk. So just because we have knowledge of the word of God, it doesn't mean that there is a conviction of the word on the inside of us. Uh, again, when we first started out, we knew the word of God, 
but it didn't mean that we always walked in that conviction of the word of God. That that just that just means that we understood the word of God and and having uh, uh, making a choice to believe the word of God over circumstances is what helped us develop our faith. Because when you when you make that choice to lean on your conviction of the word of God instead of your understanding of either the word of God or the circumstances. <clears throat> that's when your faith will grow. Um, there's also sense knowledge that we need to be aware of. This is allowing ourselves to believe only, uh, only what our senses will confirm, what you see, touch, feel, hear, smell, and smell. <laughs> so real Bible faith is heart conviction, which only comes from the Word of God as stated in Romans 10, 17, that says, so then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Listen to this. If we have only the knowledge of the scripture, we can mistake that for Bible faith. But if the conviction is missing, get back in the word until conviction comes because that is faith. That is how faith comes. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So you may understand, you may have a knowledge of that scripture, but if you don't have the conviction behind that, that scripture, behind what God promises you, if, uh, if circumstances tend to, uh, to make you jump to fear instead of faith, <clears throat> then that conviction of the word of God is lacking. You may know the word of God, but that conviction is missing. So get in the word of God until you're fully convinced that you're fully persuaded that God's promise is true no matter what the circumstance looks like. Eight minutes. We're going to talk about heart faith versus head faith. <laughs> faith is a spiritual practice, not an intellectual one. We've talked about that. It doesn't, it's not, we're not, faith isn't ruled by your knowledge, your understanding. Faith is, is a, a heart conviction. <clears throat> Because it is spiritual, it is not dependent on our physical senses. Uh, 2 Corinthians 5, 7 says we walk by faith, not by sight. Our physical senses, what we can see, touch, taste, smell, and hear, belong to our natural or outer man. Uh, um, the 2 Corinthians 4, 16. I'm going to read it. It's not written out, but I'm going to read it. Uh, for which cause we faint not, but though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. So our physical senses, what we can see, touch, taste, smell, and hear, belong to our natural or our outer man. Uh, Bible faith or heart faith belongs to the inner man. Head faith or natural faith belongs to our outer man. The inner man responds to the word of God with conviction and persuasion. Like how Pastor Walter points out that there is head faith or natural faith. You know, I can have natural understanding and faith that this chair will hold me up. Uh, although it could break <laughs> when you sit down. I've seen chairs break when uh, uh, it's been sat in. But I know that this chair has held me up before. So that's my natural understanding. And I have faith that it will hold me up. But uh, the inner man responds to the word of God with conviction and persuasion. So let's read for, for Romans 4, 19 through 21. And being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body now dead. Hold on, hold on. Uh, the, God just uh, was, uh, was, was pointing out this point of head faith. That's the knowledge of the scripture uh, and what you know about the scripture. That's your head faith. When you know the scripture is true, but there's con missing conviction behind that missing persuasion and assurance that God's word will work for you. That's the difference between head faith and, and, uh, and spiritual faith. So, uh, 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 faith in the word of God. So, so if that assurance is not there, if you're not fully persuaded that God's word is true and that it will work for you, you can get in the word and you can, you can find what God's promises are for you concerning that, that issue in your life. And God will help you. He will reveal his truth to you and, 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 and read it out loud to yourself and, the, and watch that faith grow. Watch it and watch God prove himself to you so that your faith can increase. <clears throat> okay, so Romans 4, 19-21. And being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body now dead when he was about 100 years old, neither yet the deadness 
of Sarah's womb. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God and being fully persuaded what he had promised, he was also able to perform. Abraham was fully persuaded that what God had promised, he was able to do. So I know that God's word promises me that he's going to supply all my need according to his riches and glory. But not only do I know that that's his promise for me, I know that God is fully able to do that for my life. I know that he has, he always has, he always will, no matter what the circumstances look like, no matter what the deadline looks like, God is fully able to meet my needs and to supply, supply my needs according to his riches and glory. There is a miraculous supply in God's provision for you. You just have to believe. You have to be fully convinced that he is able to do it for you and that he will do it for you. Okay. Verse 19 tells us that Abraham did not allow his circumstances to outweigh God's promises. He made a conscious decision. He chose. He made the choice. To, to side with his inward persuasion rather than to side with his intellect and his feelings. Now he knew, he knew the circumstances. He knew that Sarah's womb was dead. He knew that she was, or that he was 100 years old and she was 90 years old. He knew those circumstances, but he made the choice to decide, he made the choice to side with God's promise over the circumstances. Notice that in verse 21, he was fully persuaded that God, what God had promised, he was able to perform. This is an inward persuasion. The stronger it is, the less likely our intellect will interfere. Head faith or leaning on our own human understanding depends on our senses. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 12 and through 14 says, Now we have received <clears throat> not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God, <clears throat> which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the but which the Holy Ghost teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual, but the natural man receiveth not the things of God, re receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him, neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. The reason why the natural man cannot receive the things of God is because the natural man is governed by his physical senses. Faith is a spiritual force. So this is what I'm talking about when you're when you realize when you begin to 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 make a conscious effort to 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 know what motivates your actions, what motivates your uh, choices, what motivates your thoughts, where those where those where those things are coming from and the motivation behind those things, then you can begin to, to, to recognize uh, how you should choose to operate. You, should, you can begin to recognize what you need to do. If, if I realize that, hey, I'm, I'm operating out of fear, you know, that, that choice that I made had uh, fear motivated behind it, whether, whether it came from insecurity or, uh, or, um, or a little bit of doubt, then I can make the, the decision to, to, to change that, to repent and go back. Amber's laughing at me because I keep stuttering. <laughs> but to, to repent and go back and, and, and make the choice to believe and operate out of faith instead of fear. And so, so it's important that we recognize what are the motivations behind our actions and what we're, what we're, what we're operating in. Why do I keep stuttering? Okay, <clears throat> so faith is a spiritual force. It cannot be seen, but it can be spiritually discerned. Second Corinthians 4.13 says, uh, We having the same spirit of faith, according as it is written, I believed and therefore I have spoken. We also believe and therefore speak. Our physical senses cannot believe unless they can see, feel, and touch. The natural or outer man could only believe and depend on what he sees. This is why Thomas would not believe unless he could see, touch, see and touch. And why Jesus said, blessed are they who have, who have not seen yet believed. And that's in John chapter 20. So blessed are the ones who believe who have not yet seen or touched. Thomas said he would only believe if he could see Jesus and touch him with his own hands. Blessed are the ones who believe who have not seen. Blessed 
is the one who believes the word of God with persuasion and conviction over any circumstance that comes in, in their life. You know, there are so many instances where Jesus marveled at people's faith because they chose to believe regardless of the circumstance, regardless of what things came against them, regardless of what it looked like. They operated in great faith. And so, uh, 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 blessed is the one who believes. When one becomes accustomed to operating in head faith, he is blinded to his spiritual nature and cannot see by the eyes of faith. To see what God has for us, we must first be able to see it spiritually by faith. You must receive it and have it on the inside of you. Uh, Mark eleven twenty four says, When you pray, believe you have received and you shall have. Uh, it is this inward conviction or persuasion that what uh, that the Bible calls faith. Our inward man, which speaks conviction, says, I, I have it now. The outer man or natural man says, show it to me physically. But faith says, I have it now. Faith sees those things that are not as though they are. Faith knows that you have it. It's a conviction that you have it. This is uh, uh, the, out, the outer man again says, I, uh, show it to me physically before I can believe it. This is unfortunate because the natural in the natural, it will never be seen. Faith must be spiritually discerned. And that's 1 Corinthians 2.14. We'll end with that scripture. <clears throat> it says, But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit, for they are foolishness unto him, neither can, they know, can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. So God is so good. Um, I hope this was, I hope this uh, spoke to you and I hope that this um, ministered to you in a way that God uh, can help you in your faith life and what you're believing for because that is uh, ultimately uh, what God wants for you is, is better than anything you can ever imagine. We love you guys and we hope you guys have a blessed week. We'll see you on Sunday morning. Thank you for joining us today. If the ministry of the word has been a blessing to you, please consider contributing to the work of the ministry at www.redeemedcf.breezechms.com forward slash give forward slash online. You can also text to give by texting the amount you would like to give to 602-962-3848. If you have a testimony of how the ministry of the word has been a blessing to you, please send us a message on one of our social media platforms. We would love to hear from you. Thank you for your continued support of the work here at Redeemed Christian Fellowship.